It's time for Mortal Kombat Week here on The Horror Show, starting with 1995's Mortal Kombat. Round one! Fight! What's up, everyone? Welcome back to The Horror Show. I'm Cecil Laird. I'm uh, Jaime Sub-Zero. <laughs> <laughs> Robert Duell. <laughs> I know. Fuego's I got nothing. Showing... On, I, I got nothing after yeah. that one. <laughs> he's, he's showing the both of us up at this point. But look, uh... that's usually my shit, man. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, guys, we are here to start Mortal Kombat week here on the Horror Show Channel. We are going to be reviewing all three movies this week, as well as the two legacy web series, as well as a special Mortal Kombat reaction episode coming at you this Thursday. So. Lots of Mortal Kombat goodness coming your way, starting with the original 1995 adaptation, Mortal Kombat. And I'm going to start this one off and say, this one has always held a special place in my heart. I, I loved the games growing up. Um, I loved Street Fighter 2 until I got wind of Mortal Kombat, uh, especially Mortal Kombat 2. I really got drawn in even further with that one, and I, I just, I loved this movie when it came out it it had good actors uh at the time for me you know i know they're not a level but they were still good i enjoyed what they did with the roles i enjoyed seeing all my my favorite characters on screen i thought the sets were amazing i mean we'll go into all of it but overall i loved this movie when it first came out and it still holds a place in my heart the only thing that doesn't hold up not that it was great at the time is the reptile effect but we'll get into it <laughs> otherwise everything else in this movie i frankly adore so this is a s tier mortal Kombat experience in my estimation fuego i'm gonna echo your sentiments man this was a game that uh when when this film was coming out the game was such a phenomenon at this particular point i distinctively remember tricking my yaya rest her soul um <laughs> into buying me the Genesis version so that I could actually have the blood at home and my parents didn't even know about it. Well, she called like, Yaya because that's yeah, all yeah. she knew how to do. So when you're like, can I have this game? She was like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> wow. I still remember going to Toys R Us with her, man. And even the clerk was like, this is a violent game. Are you sure you want to buy this for the kids? Blah, ah. blah, blah. And I was just what like, a shut up. Like, shut up, dude. <laughs> yeah. you know, don't but, don't, uh, don't ruin just, this Just me. being in the theater for this, and since it was a PG-13 experience, I didn't have to deal with any of that. I remember being at Crypt Town with my friends at the, uh, the the theater that you had to go to, like up on the, the, on the escalator, the one that was on the second level. Mm -hmm. And it was just such a fun experience. The crowd was so into it, man, as was I. And I felt like it pushed the PG-13 boundaries pretty well especially with that johnny cage scorpion fight which is the best one in the whole film yeah. uh it's, it's this movie is fun it's it's kind of corny at times but that's like that's the appeal of it and uh yeah man it's it's still arguably the best video game adaptation out there so. uh, arguably mm -hmm. okay yeah so basically it's again it's going to be another echo off of these guys and everything i have again i i fucking adore the shit out of this movie um, I remember watching it and everything as a kid, renting it um, when I, that's actually my uh, first experience with Mortal Kombat. Uh, basically, yeah, I rented that and Spawn. Nice. And that's how, that's how I remember this and everything. And uh, yeah, and then started obviously getting, playing into the games, things like that. But yeah, no, this movie has always had a special play, place in my heart. Is it perfect? Not necessarily, but it's the nostalgia beauty of it and everything. Just. It was, I, honestly, this was one of the better uh, '90s adaptations of a video game stuff that we got. Like even like we had stuff like uh, was like a uh, Street Fighter, I want to say, and stuff like that with uh, Jean Claude. Continue. Van I'm Damme. just grabbing something real quick. Double Dragon, which you mentioned Dragon, uh, last exactly. week when we saw you in person. Yep, <laughs> yep, yep. And then um, uh, so so yeah, like this, and I can see why it became as popular as it did. Sadly, we'll get into the sequel when we get there. Things kind of fell apart there. But all in all, though, this movie is great and it still holds up for the most part, except for some of the CG. <laughs> um, but we'll get in. Yes, so, we will. Yeah, yeah. So then correct me if I'm wrong, Robert. So you saw the movie before you'd played the games? Yeah. Oh, wow. wow. Okay. That's, that's an that's interesting how, perspective. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, I was like 
seven yeah. or eight when, when I played it, when I first watched it and shit. Ooh, I'm so young. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, well, <laughs> I just so remember all the controversy about the game, man. I mean, Mortal yeah. Kombat was part of like the ratings board being created, the ESRB at the time, it, yeah. and all, all the stuff you know throughout uh, the. You know, the government, Cecil's got something he wants to show us. That's well, yeah, I, I got this because of, as you were talking, Robert, um, I didn't have the Blu-rays of, I, I don't know where my copies of this DVD went, so mm -hmm. I had to pick up the Mortal Kombat movies, and I was like, well, I might as well get them on Blu-ray, and there was one place that had a combination, and guess, it came with Mortal Kombat 1, Annihilation, and Mortal Kombat Legacy 1, and one other movie bundled in with it. And guess which one it was? Was it Street Fighter? No, it's Spawn. Oh. <laughs> I have the unrated cut of Spawn on That's DVD. Awesome. That's one that I've been wanting to break out. So for he a came while. across <laughs> this and Spawn, and and it managed to get bundled with Spawn in this Blu-ray release. So that would be honestly, irony. <laughs> great movies to bundle together. You know, it's fun for the whole family. Oh, so yeah. uh, let's get into the story. I mean, we don't have to spend much time on this. It's a group of people are drawn from their real world lives into this uh, deadly Mortal Kombat uh, on this uh, hidden private island uh, that is run by a sorcerer by the name of Shang Tsung and they're all forced to fight uh, Earth Worlders versus Outworlders uh, in order to try and save the world from invasion from a place called Outworld. This is the 10th in the line of 10 Mortal Kombats, and they've lost nine. So if Earth loses again, then we get conquered. So, yeah, so the stakes are high in that regard. <laughs> indeed. So we have characters like Liu Kang, Sonya Blade, Johnny Cage, and you know numerous other randos, but that's the core trio, uh, as they try and battle their way through this tournament. And honestly, they really did a good job of translating the game into a movie. Like... How are you going to do it with all these characters with different backstories? They chose to focus on a few characters. Personally, I think that Legacy kind of did it better as far as introducing all the characters, but we'll get to that. And I agree. part of that is, is to do with the freedom that they had with the medium that they chose. But as a singular movie with the characters they chose to portray, I thought that this was a well-told story. Yeah, I, I totally concur, man. And it's it's interesting seeing what Mortal Kombat became over time with the focus really being between Scorpion and Sub-Zero. They're mm -hmm. like a little more of the backseat sort mm -hmm. of situation in this. It's really- They're just hired hitmen on yeah, this. Yeah, it's about the, it, it, it's about the Earth Realm trio, mm -hmm. essentially, you know, of Johnny Cage and, you know, Liu Kang and, and Sonya Blade. And uh, Christopher Lambert is, He's, he's an interesting Raiden, you know? He's more of a wisecracking Raiden, the way that they wrote him and stuff, and laughing about stuff. Not he's as stoic best. as in the games, and, you know, even some of the other incarnations that, that we see of him, but... The fate of billions yeah. rest upon you. But, <laughs> so, but the iconic... <laughs> but, but the iconic lines also, that not just him, that they give uh, the, the actor who portrays Shang Tsung, who was brought back for the Legacy series in Part 2, which we'll get to in a, in a mm -hmm. later review. But, I, I mean, the, the characters, like, like the, the dialogue more so than anything, is fun in this film. I mean, that was a $500 pair of sunglasses, asshole! Like, that sort of stuff. Um, and, 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 yeah, Johnny Cage wasn't... He, he wasn't super douchey like he's been in some of the other portrayals of him, I think. Mm -hmm. Like, they got the tone right with all these characters. Luke King's virtuousness and yet hesitance. And, you know, Johnny Cage being cocky but yet still having conviction. And, you know, Sonya Blade just being a bitter kind of bitch a little bit, you know, and still a babe. So, I, I mean, I don't know. All of the characters were... They, they expanded. I, I, all, all that we had about these characters from the games was, like in the load screens before you put your quarters in they had like a bio of the characters and that's about all that that you had now this is not like the deepest film you're going to get as far as character development goes but i did feel like they expanded on mythology at least of our main characters pretty well our, our main trio at least and uh, and, and shang Tsung is just written awesomely so mm -hmm. yeah you mm -hmm. lost the you lost the guard here. yeah i, know, yeah. Yeah, I was just about <laughs> to say uh, you used some armor there gay yeah go ahead robert <laughs> um yeah no so just parts. real quick um kind of again an echo on like what you guys were saying is yeah the character development for what they did with this movie again it was still such a new property okay. and we didn't have yeah. as much of a backstory really on all the characters of what we do now um, since everything's been so fleshed out, so it was it was nice to see the portrayal and what they when who they cast for it. Mm -hmm. And actually, the, the cool thing too is uh, Robin Show, uh, the one who played Liu Kang. This is actually his first movie. Oh wow! Damn. 
Yeah, apparently, like he was, he did um, like other side work and stuff like that, and then he kind of got in, got into acting. This was his big first movie, basically, hmm. and then he went on from there and whatnot. Um, but no, even for that, like he did a great job again because no, like these the, again, like I was saying earlier, the characters are still new, so all these actors had decent liberties to figure out what this character actually would be like, mm -hmm. and like you, like what Fuego was even saying with um, uh. Johnny Cage, the actor who played him, he did have that semi-arrogant cockiness, but he had a lot of convictions and everything and self-empathy. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of the nice thing that he brought to it and shit. Mm -hmm. But also, even, even still too, like, I I kind of, I rather would have seen a different casting for Sonya Blade, though. Huh. I liked her. Yeah, um, the, I, did, so like, from, I didn't, uh, I didn't, Billy I didn't Madison. mind her. Billy yeah, Madison, yeah. she was actually introduced as Jack Slater's daughter in uh, Last Action Hero. Yep, yep, yep. Um, but no, no, like she didn't, like she wasn't. I didn't really actually take me out of it. I still would have just preferred a different casting. Although what they did with the second one was just way far <laughs> off. <laughs> um, well, you've obviously segued into the acting, so um, oh yeah, I, I. I, I I thought everyone acquitted themselves fine for the movie that it was. I mean, there was some silliness, yes, but I, I really liked the the main actors. I thought Christopher Lambert was uh, Lambert, however you say it. <laughs> Lambert. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but um, I thought he did a fun job, but he was a little over the top. But everyone kind of was. So I, I enjoyed the acting pretty much all throughout this one. Well, yeah, man, the most <clears> iconic <throat> for me is probably still Shang Tsung and just the delivery mm -hmm. of some of those aforementioned lines like your soul is mine. Kano was great too. Stuff. I loved Kano. Oh, Kano was very fun in this movie, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And t t t I don't know. I'd like, Brid is it Bridget Wilson? I think, I think it's Bridget Wilson. Yeah. Bridget Wilson. I keep thinking Bridget Nielsen. I'm like, no, that's Rocky yeah. Ford. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Bridget Wilson. Yeah. But I, I, I dug the Johnny Cage character. Uh, I, I, I don't know. The, the trio really worked for me. Lambert is honestly the only one where I, I feel like he was hamming it up just a little more than was necessary, but I kind of attribute that probably to Paul W.S.'s director, or Paul Anderson, as he was credited yeah. at the time. I think he probably wanted him to ham it up. You know, this is a video game movie, you know, we're having fun, exactly. so to speak. So I, I, I don't know, speculation abounds with that, but um, I, I mean, it was just the... It was just the right amount of cheese from the entirety <laughs> of the cast, and and also there's some very harrowing scenes too. Like the uh, spoiler, the death of Luke Kang's brother mm -hmm. at the very beginning is a brutal oh, yeah. scene, and it sets the tone very well with his arm getting twisted and broken, and the you know the, his death and everything. I mean, there despite the fact that there are bits of silliness here and there, it, it balanced the tone amongst the actors very well, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, go ahead, Robert. No, I like I'll I'll, I'll 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 agree on that and everything. Like the the campiness, it again though too, it being the 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 early stages of like video game adaptions in the movies. Like I, I think they were still trying to figure out the like the proper tones of what they should do. Should they keep it more of that kind of can the the goofy campy video game kind of style with some seriousness, or just go straight serious like what we have nowadays? Yeah, go which darker. It, Super Mario Brothers move. <laughs> yeah, and but that's the cool thing though. It's like they at least they've realized that with these type of movies, if you adapt them to more of the that full serious um, seriousness, it's going to work out better. But even still, with this for for that '90s movie, is it was fun as shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, so let's let's talk about the uh, the music and the sound design. Oh, dude, the, the so soundtrack. The, track the, is the, slaves, yeah, the soundtrack dude. we'll get to. The sound design was was good. It was fun, but yeah, it's the soundtrack that's really the thing to mm -hmm. write home about. There's like this whole soundtrack still slaps, dude. It is it is so mm -hmm. good the whole way through. Honestly, it's very time capsule. -y. It is very of the '90s. Yeah, <laughs> but there's some really fun tracks in there that are that are that are just still stand the test of time the actual mortal Kombat theme like still to this totally day will get people goals, grooving yeah. if you play oh, yeah. it, you know out loud and stuff like that so i, I was all about all this yeah i had mm -hmm. this soundtrack on cassette back in the day i remember going to the Zia and purchasing it man and uh, between gravity kills and then you had geezer gzr which was geezer butler from black sabbath's project with burton c bell from uh, fear factory fear factory is on the soundtrack too I, i'm trying to remember mm -hmm. if they're actually in the film or not but like some of the fights have full-on like metal going on mm -hmm. during the fight and i was just like 
this pummels a lot more than I honestly remembered at the time because I was a punk alternative rock kid at the time. I hadn't even gotten into heavier stuff really, and uh, t yeah, I, and, and I love the whole industrial electronic vibe to a lot of the tunes too. It's it's great, man. I like the angelic mm -hmm. end song where it's like da -da 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 the whole self celebration bit where they're cheering yeah, with the punks and everything. Like, yeah. I still dig that. Yeah. I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> It's too happy. Look what happens, <laughs> <laughs> Robert. But no, on no. So yeah. So echoing on the uh, on the soundtrack and everything. Yeah, it still most definitely holds up. The one that um, uh, sticks out the most is I would say the um, the track for Goro, uh, Goro's fight. Mm -hmm. That oh, yeah. that shit is hits hard. I, yeah, is it's that so the one that's nasty. Like, dun, 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 dun. Oh no, it's not. That's no, not it's like. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, that's right. Yeah. It's almost got like a Terri terrible, terrible, terrible uh, instrument impression, you know, guys. <laughs> no, but that's, I get it. I get it. <laughs> um, but no, absolutely. Like the, the soundtrack, the sound design, and everything worked out so well for this movie. And and I've even mentioned this too in other reviews. Like this, bring these type of soundtracks back to the movies, and it engages you and brings you deeper into the into the into the characters, into what's going on. Like and, like too many times I've noticed they they just they seem to just throw random like what what's hot kind of songs onto a movie whether it fits or not and it literally just ruins it for me honestly the next one or, that did it is almost as well as this was i think the blade soundtrack blade soundtrack would, the scream I would, I would soundtrack definitely, I, would I know definitely what you did last summer that. like we had a discussion with cp about this yeah. how as but opposed to like movie. crafting new stuff they we should just... do like the five best horror movie soundtracks oh man Dude, the scream so would be on there too the, the, the 90s and 2000s were a time when this was prevalent where as opposed to mm -hmm. licensing music you just had the artists come on board and create original stuff write that yeah, down, for, so, hey, yeah, we gotta for the films this. if we start from like say 1980 and we go to about 2005 yeah 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 because that's oh, that about it, when they and also the one thing I, I wanted to mention, since this being a PG-13 movie, the sound design is really important because as opposed to Punch seeing the like the broken limbs and stuff, hearing the cracking of bones mm -hmm. and all that stuff, that's how they sold it to me, especially as a younger viewer. Just like, damn! Yeah, because oh, you don't see guys Sonia the cringe. Stop, dude. You don't see Sno Sonia snap Kano's neck. Mm -hmm. You see they her legs away. around his head, yeah. and then you see her go... Ugh. And they go, yeah. and then they show his. his yeah. They show her legs release his head and his lifeless body. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's talk about the effects. Obviously, well, no, actually, b b well, we'll talk about it briefly, and then we'll talk about something that I think mattered even more in this movie. So the effects were, um, you know, there was some good makeup effects. Goro was a practical effect. He looks so. Great. There awesome. was some good effects. There was one bad effect, which was the reptile, um, until he became. Ninja Reptile. Oh, then yeah. you get the ninja version of the reptile, and his mask is really dope and stuff, which is what I want to talk about next. But let's stick with the effects first. And the bugs after him. For the yeah. most part, well, I dug the effects, and especially all of the makeup effects were really cool when you got them. Kano mm -hmm. looked dope. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't disagree. Um, he he most you? definitely did. Yeah, man. Um, I would probably lean more so to some of like the, the, the costume design of characters. Well, I want to talk about costume design costume. and production design next. So, yeah. Separately, okay. Separately. okay. Yeah, I, I, I mean, even even the CGI that was very obviously uh, the little... I, it's not quite a Van Damme spear. <laughs> it bird. was like the bird, whatever, come in. It doesn't look bad, man. Like the, the opening of the flesh in his hand and stuff, I thought that was pretty solid. Yes, Reptile was a little lackluster and there is a little bit of cgi augmentation with goro but the the, the practicality of his look this huge puppet i'm assuming right mm -hmm. was what goro was I and mean, yeah yeah he was he was rad status the facial movements and everything this was at that time before hollywood had committed to going full cgi mm -hmm. they liked having they that, dabbled that with count. reptile and they're mm -hmm. like we don't want to make goro this yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. so thankfully so it, it, it all looked great i i honestly want to gush more so once we get to it about the the locations yeah. and like the set design that's and next stuff. so yeah. robert on the effects on the effects yeah no just john a quick uh overview back again yeah goro was i think one of the more highlights on obviously practical effects kind of stuff um but Really, like it's it's a lot to do with um, like the costume and set design. That's that's the biggest shiner, like the biggest outshine in this whole movie. Really, is the where they shot it, or the costume designs, things like that. Um, other than that, yeah, I would say it's it's it's, it's those, uh, 
it's still a given that the CG in this movie never will hold up. Even in the even even in that day, it, it didn't hold up. Um, some of the but, morphing effects weren't bad. No, no, some, they, not. no, they weren't terrible and everything, but it was more so like reptile individually yeah. on yeah. its own and everything. Yeah, um, but, but also, but, but uh, was Shang, it, um, like Shang Tsung transformation stuff. Yeah. Those were actually didn't look those were actually bad. very nicely done and everything because it it's not a hundred percent full CGI mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. creature and everything like that. Yeah. Um, but actually, the fun fact though is the guy who played um, reptile at the end. Actually, plays Sub Zero in Annihilation. Oh, that's cool. Good for him. Yeah, moving up in the world. Yeah, yeah. The th- the the thing that just occurred to me that I want to chime in about is that um, my my favorite fight in the film, which is the Johnny Cage Scorpion. That fight. one actually was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, Scorpion after he pulls the mask in the reel, it it could have looked a lot crappier, mm-hmm. but it actually. I, I thought it looked good, man, and especially after he gets like sliced open and the lava mm-hmm. is coming out, I thought I thought those effects were very convincing and really good. You know, yeah. personally, I think that fight still holds up. His skull gets slashed mm-hmm. like a big chunk of it off, and yep. uh, I just love that fight. It gets me nostalgic. It makes me happy. <laughs> yeah, and that's 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 attributed to the practical effects of it. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, and even the, like, the the freezing stuff that Sub Zero did, not, not it, bad. It no. wasn't bad. Yeah, no, there was some, obviously like mo- you know. The effects in this movie weren't necessarily terrible. It just had some shiners, you know, some little doozy spots in it and shit. What? What I? What I well, I'll, I'll t- ask me what I ultimately wish at the end of this because <laughs> what I ultimately wish definitely involves this movie. Um, we'll we'll get to it, but um, uh, the the locations, the production design, yeah. and the costume design, all of that is pretty much by far and away besides the score the best parts of this movie uh Mm -hmm. you feel like you're on this mystical island with all these statues that don't make sense because they're of nothing that we know you know what i mean and then the main the dining hall the entrance to scorpion and johnny cage's location in the nether realm uh to the the pit at the very end like they nailed locations in this movie so well Mm -hmm. And the costume design was so cool and so well done throughout. I mean, all of that stuff deserves to, to be pointed out 100%. Yeah, mm-hmm. man, it's a tournament that is supposed to feel larger than life. And in comparison with, I mean, as much as I like Legacy and as much as I've like hated on Annihilation from time to time, like this film felt like the scope and the scale of this franchise, man. I mean, I felt like I was transported somewhere else and and the fact that they just these huge areas with all of these extras which is something unfortunately in annihilation and in legacy you don't have you don't have all of these people like you know cheering on the fights and in these huge outdoor locations as opposed to to spots that felt like sets especially in annihilation which we'll get to in, in round two of this next review but yeah man this just felt felt like I was transported and for that reason I it still feels like the best representation of this this universe I, I guess so I yeah no I, I most definitely agree with you on that Fuego um, especially just the, the 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 overall feel and the uh, authenticity from what they pulled from the video games like I, I, I personally like that how like they took the detail from the video games so well and put it into the movie especially with the costumes but also too it, it goes to it kind of goes back to a little bit of what I'm saying is like the the modernizing of like the costumes and shit because they were straight pulled right from the video games because again that's all we knew so that's what we have so it got that kind of over time it became oh this is a kind of campy looking kind of thing but either either way though it's like the, the real the real beauty of it was the 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 um the, the island, yeah, like the dining hall, the final, the final fight scene. Um, but even still, like, yeah, like what, um, Frago, what you were saying with Scorpion and Johnny Cage's fight, how it goes from the uh, that wooded area into I don't know his his nether realm or whatever the hell you want to call mm-hmm, it, which is it, like, like the living forest to the armory <laughs> yeah. in MK2, yeah. basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and like, and that that I think looked probably the best. For, for the movie toward for at least that part of the movie and then once you get towards the the thir- the uh, last half or whatever that's where I think where they really start outshining 
their uh, their set production. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even the boat that picks them up, man. I mean, yep. it just felt that, so legit. Yeah. Like I'm in like a, you know dark fairy tale of violence and craziness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. fun. Well, even too, like when um, when like the tournament begins, basically when they're on the boat. Even all the uh, the effects that were going through uh, oh, the sky, yeah. and whatnot, it basically looked like they were flying through the sky. Mm -hmm. like, it was it was kind of neat. So yeah, I mean, uh, the, the, what I was gonna say that I would love is ultimately, I think the best baby of these two movies would be a blending of this movie and the legacy telling. So um, uh, ultimately, the it takes the earnestness of legacy with some of the fantastical elements of this one and I think you'd have the perfect baby which I personally believe is what we're going to get on Friday. Boy, I hope so. I really hope. I, I'm holding out hope that that's the case. But it's, it, it's already out internationally and uh, the response has been really positive Oh, so really? Far. That's good yeah, to know. Yeah, okay. yeah, no, I've been, I've been hearing some really good things on it. I've been trying to like avoid all like, the new anything, trailers so, and yeah. shit. I'm I've just seen like, stuff nope. on the Twitters. But <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to avoid it like the plague. Yeah. Well, we'll be back here this Friday with our review. We're going to Watch it um, probably at midnight on Thursday and then record a review first thing Friday morning to put up um, as soon as we can. So look forward to that. Tomorrow we'll be back with our review of Mortal Kombat Annihilation, which we're about to record. That should be fun. <laughs> if you guys enjoyed this video, click the like button and subscribe. Ding that notification bell if you want to make sure you don't miss any of these Mortal Kombat episodes this week. If you want to, the link to our Patreon is in the description box down below. If you want to support the channel a little more directly like that, thank you to all of our patrons who choose to do so. Appreciate you. Until tomorrow, I've been Cecil Lair. Gracias, I've been Jaime Sub-Zero. Robert Dole. And remember, <laughs> stay, stay scared. scared. Stay scared, guys.